Today's show is sponsored by the ABV Network Merchandise Shop. Check out our large assortment of logo merch and our lifestyle collection as well. Just head over to abvnetwork.com and click on shop. We are also sponsored by The Bar to Go. The Bar to Go offers a fully customizable carrying case that allows you to take your favorite distilled spirits or cocktail ingredients with you. Whether you're looking for yourself, a customized gift, or logo items for your business or event, The Bar to Go can help. Check them out at thebartogo.com. Use the number two when you type out The Bar to Go. Did you know Neely Family Distillery now ships its popular distilled spirits directly to you? To order, simply call 859-394-3258. Tell them the ABV Network sent you. And now, on to the show. Let's drink! Welcome to the Bourbon Daily, the podcast about everything bourbon delivered to you every day of the week. Today on the show, we learn about the bourbon journey of Ryan Thompson. My name is Miss Becca Sue. Please join me in welcoming my co-host, Steve Akeley, along with our special guests, Chrissy Svetz, Ryan Thompson, and Jim Fosnod. Hey gang, what's up? How we doing? What's up, guys? Oh, not much, not much. We are going to be talking about Ryan and his bourbon journey. we got all kinds of questions. We want to figure out how all this stuff happened. But before we get to that, we got a little chit chat we got to do because Jim said there's something he's dying to talk about. What is that, Jim? So I love to cook. So I'm usually the one that does the grocery shopping. And I don't enjoy grocery shopping just because people are idiots. So what is your biggest pet peeve in the grocery stores or grocery shopping in general? I'll kick this one off and okay. say the whole experience is a pet peeve of mine because I am with you, Jim. I don't like going to the grocery store at all. So I try to avoid it as much as possible. Uh, but then there are there are nuances uh, underneath that uh, top layer that uh, I'm sure uh, you guys can hit on as well. But uh, I just don't like the whole experience in general. Yeah, I I, I was at the grocery store today and uh, one of my pet peeves came uh, out. It was fully engaged because now for some reason. Uh, I don't, people always have to call who's ever left at home to talk about the options and, and literally a full conversation on speakerphone. Of course, it's a woman in a, in one of those carts. The only uh, thing that's wrong with her is she's uh, morbidly obese, I think. Mm-hmm. And, and she's on the phone and she's talking, she's got the whole barbecue sauce and I need to get in there. I need to get some barbecue. She's got the whole thing blocked and she's having this whole conversation. They don't have the one that you wanted. They don't have sweet honey. What would you like to get? And the person says anything, just pick one. And she's like, well, do you want like a craft? And then she's like, what about the, the, the craft? This, the regular craft. Yes. I'll, that's fine. Just grab that and go, well, what do would you like the craft, the, the mild and sweet <laughs> or just the regular? Uh, yeah, we, either one, you just pick it. It's fine with me. Oh, they got one that has bourbon and uh, sweet. What, what, what do you think? Of? And then, then she goes through all the craft ones. And then she decides she's got to go through the sweet baby rays, which there's like 20 of those. And the person is literally telling her, pick whatever you want. I don't care. You can base it on price. You can, you know, wh- whatever is best, you can just grab it. And the woman would not accept that. She'd be like, okay, I'll get that. And then she'd be like, well, wait, what about this? And it's just such a frustrating thing because she's got the whole thing blocked. I can't get it. I'm rude if I say, excuse me, and reach across her to get in there. So I'm letting her let this thing play out, though. I, I'm hoping at some point she's going to feel my presence and my, my brewing anger. And she doesn't. She absolutely does not. She's going to have that full conversation and go over every every sweet baby raise, every craft that's out there, and she's not moving. And yeah, uh, so Steve, that- I always, when I come across people like that, I always think to myself, you know, I'm lucky to have three minutes of of your presence in my lifetime. But just think how lucky that significant other is at home that has the rest of their <laughs> life with a person like that. <laughs> Horrible. Uh, so, okay, that's so a good point. I have one, you guys, I cannot stand. I mean, I do. I, I like to grocery shop. I like to cook, but I get really frustrated when people bring their whole family. Oh, oh. so they have the cart and six children. Oh, that are all the kids are all on, just going in different like, directions. Screaming, they got to touch everything. Quiet. Yeah. Like it's not a fun experience, really. So why bring the whole family yeah. or let the right. kids sit in the car? Yeah. And then I don't like the loud talkers that are have their um. Well, it's, I wouldn't be Bluetooth anymore, but they talk really loud. And you're like, are they talk- right. talking to me? Talking to me? <laughs> yes. Like, I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, huh? And they're like, I'm not, nothing. I'm on. I'm like, I'm sorry. 
They do this. Finally, I realized. Yeah. Yeah. The ear point, like, like you're an idiot for being right. like, did someone just speak to me? And you're like, <laughs> you're like it's in my ear. And you're like, I, yeah. did I do something wrong? There's a lot of phone conversations that happen at the grocery store. Becca, how about you? Whew. I, I am the primary uh, and only virtually uh, grocery shopper in the household. Um, and so I get to deal with all the grocery shopping people. Um, there's a few different things that just really piss me off. Uh, for one, I don't know how this happens, but it seems like, and it's not every grocery trip, but there's always one couple who just consistently get in your fucking way in every goddamn <laughs> aisle that you go down. Right. You're like trying to go down the aisle. And there's the two of them talking about the sweet baby fucking rays. Right. Like, I don't know, honey. And they're like, or take it the whole aisle. And you're like, you just get the fuck out of my way. Yeah. On top of it, the same couple thinks that they should have their grocery cart right in front of all the things that you need to open up. Like all the, all the, the, the frozen and, and the, the refrigerated stuff, they have their stuff right parked down. And then the two of them are standing in front of like four other cases so that everyone else is like standing there. Like, can you guys please move? And they're pushing around like for like the, the specific sour cream. And you're like, can you just grab a fucking sour cream and stop taking up this entire aisle? And like, maybe when you go up here, move your cart to the back. Yeah. So that other of us can walk up to that one next to you and grab something out of it. Cause you're blocking it with your fucking grocery cart. Yeah. You know, back. you know what? One back. time we had this conversation, everything you're talking Becca. imagine this McNew had the same conversation, but everything was the opposite. Like if I like put my cart, like in the middle of the aisle, that's where I've left it. It's my, you do not touch my cart. Cause I, I put it there. I'll touch it when it's ready to move. And if you don't like it, go to another aisle. There's 22 aisles in the store. You can go to another one. And I'm like, are you kidding me? This is so rude. I'm trying it, to get done. I'm trying to get out of here. You're on a mission. It's like, or if she's like shopping that. a section. She, don't, don't, don't ruin her because she's shopping the section. It's that's her turn, her time to be there. It'd be, oh. it'd be like if there was a phone booth and you walked in and, and don't get a turn. Home. Yeah, it's not a turn. You get in, you get the fuck out, and you get the fuck out of my way because I'm trying to do, I'm on a mission, and I am being, mind you, I'm being very polite the entire time. I'm like, excuse me, and I try to like, move my cart out of the way, and I'm doing all the correct things. Even when I, like, load up all my stuff onto the, the, the fucking belt, mm -hmm. I, like, put all the things together. I'm like, okay, the, like, here's the meats together, and here's the cheeses. These are the, these were non-grocery items, and so they'll probably put these into the, a different bag all of them themselves, and then another thing that pisses me off is when they don't have a, a bagger there and like, and they have baggers, but just one is not at that particular station. Right. And so then all these things that I just very nicely separated so that they could very easily toss them all in one bag and get done with it really quick. This schmuck is off, like smoking a cigarette outside, not bagging my stuff. I understand yeah. taking a break. I get that, but get some more baggers so that, People can get in and out of there because then it's this like poor 95 year old woman being like, I'm so sorry. Uh, oh, is this bag a little heavy? And she put like three things in the one bag and then double bags it because it's too heavy for her 95 year old arms. And I'm like, <laughs> I like pick it up. And she's acting like it was a cinder block where it's literally like. Becca picks it up with a pinky. Yeah, I'm like, just a teacher. Oh, this one's a little heavy. And she's like, I've got another lady behind me that's got a full cart. I've got a full thing of things. And I was trying to make it go fast, but now I can't make it go fast because I've got grandma trying to bag my stuff as slow as possible but it's not her fault because she's old she's supposed to have a bagger here but he's off texting yeah. his buddies yeah yeah man you, you really struck a chord here with becca yeah, i didn't play. realize yeah. that until i started talking about it How much <laughs> all right that? jim <laughs> jim asked a question what uh what's your grocery store pet peeve man <laughs> so mine goes along the same line with what becca c started with like it, it's just people's like you know spatial relations like know where you're at know who's around you and blocking the aisle i had couple months ago same thing like they wouldn't move for me to get around them and they even like looked back at me and huffed and so i was mcnew that was mcnew you ran into yeah so, so like two hours later they're coming down the aisle i just parked my cart fucking sideways in the aisle and i just sat there and looked at stuff and made a phone call and they're just looking at me the whole time like huffed but the worst to me the absolute worst with that is people you know you're checking out you you're done checking out and you're heading towards the exit and there's always some fucking couple who stops right in the exit door to check the receipt for <laughs> blocking the whole goddamn it's only way one out. way out yeah and then yeah. they're blocking like yeah. four people behind them waiting to get out and they just stop dead center it's in the an door. arrogance they don't tell care. me that it hasn't it's happened to you. i think it happens to you all the time how, how, how are people just so rude these like i don't, I don't even understand i'm like where do these yeah. people who's their yeah. mom 
who yeah. raised them. This my topic father, brought out old man anger in every single person. Yeah, <laughs> like, every single like person ass. on the panel here, and only two of us are old men. So yeah, yes. there you go. My mom would kill me if I did if I did any of that stuff, like taking up the whole aisle and just being rude in general and like reading the nutritional facts. <laughs> I don't care about the nutritional facts. Yeah, I don't either. Uh-huh. Like do, re- read them before you get there. Before you, you get, make your list. Search it, find it. Can I eat that? Oh, I can't. Perfect. Not buying yeah. it. There you go. There you go. Well, I think we need a drink. So it is time to drink. What is everyone? We're starting with Becca this time. Becca, what do you got there? Uh, let's see here. I try to go like lowest proof. To, oh, okay. This, okay. So this will be my next one. Is this 80 proof? 90 proof? Uh, I have got some Woodenville uh, straight bourbon whiskey. They are out of Washington. Okay. Okay. Washington Woodenville. All right. Here we go. No, not much there. Not much there. Not enough. Uh, well, it's enough to take the lead, I guess, because there's been no one else go. But uh, Ryan, what do you got? You got to beat uh, Becca there. Uh, we're going to move on from Peerless uh, and then just uh, enjoy a little 10th Mountain bourbon here. 10th Mountain, so, okay. Okay, looks like a well loved bottle. Let's see what's left here. Yep. See if there's any life left. No, not much. Not I think much. Becca's still got the lead. Not Becca's much. still got the lead. Chrissy, what do you got? Actually, I'm, it's it's my go-to. It's it's a wood hat. It's the Twin Timbers. Okay. It's my, one of my faves. Let's see. Let's go on this one. Okay, that's enough to take the lead. Enough to say. Chrissy Can takes I just the lead. Point something out though. What's that? That Becca Sue's got a really nice microphone. I know you do, Steve. Jim, I'm not sure about you, but Chris, do you have a microphone? No. Aside from what's in your laptop, no. or your, yeah, it, it's it, it. You can't hear. See, let's we'll blame it on that. That's what well, I'm saying. Well, you got enough to take the lead. He's he said it would have been even more if you'd had a good microphone. Yes, so. absolutely. I don't have a good. Well, microphone the problem either. is you're in Colorado, and you can ask Lenny that. Oh yeah, Lenny's done a whole study on this. So, yeah. Lenny, uh, he all this is the altitude. Yes, it's yeah. it's because I'm up in the mountains. It's not my fault. Hey, yeah, we'll go with it. Win. We'll go. But with then it. he bought a good mic, and then he did start to win. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. fresh <laughs> bottles all the time. Right. <laughs> yeah, uh, Jim, what do you got? Uh, I thought I would open a bottle of Tenth Mountain as well. So oh, this one's nice. uh, going to come in at 130 proof, a little above the 80 proof you like, Steve. Mm-hmm. But this is no love. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a shot from the, the, the sarcasm <laughs> show, folks. That's a carryover is what that was. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's not what I heard. Yeah, that's a, that's a carryover <laughs> shot there. There was no need for that. That's ridiculous. Okay, go ahead, Joe. Let, let's see how it does. Okay, no, not enough. Yeah, not, not much. Enough. Uh, Chrissy's got the lead. I've got square six here. For those of you that don't know, that's the one that Heaven Hill makes at their artisan distillery right there, uh, downtown Louisville. So here we go. I win. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I don't th- Same thing not until I declare it. Yes. Uh, that, we we got to go to the judges. That She she prematurely, uh, folks, folks, do not celebrate Christie's win yet. We got to wait for the judge here. Yes. All right. She won. She won. She did absolutely won. Uh, cheers, yeah. Chrissy. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> oh, cheers, you guys. I'm a winner. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, we'll take a quick break. And then when we come back, we're talking to Ryan here. We want to find out about that bourbon journey. We'll do that in just a few. Hello, this is Steve Akeley of the ABV Network. Let's talk about the people who make this show happen. First up is Leatherwood Distillery in Pleasant View, Tennessee. Company founder Andy Lang started distilling as a hobby while serving his country as an elite Green Beret. Andy distilled all over the world during his time in the military and brought this passion back to him in the U.S. when he returned home. A visit to Leatherwood combines Andy Lang's unique distilled spirits and a museum of artifacts from his time serving the U.S. Share a drink with a fallen soldier at their bar where you can grab an acrylic bio off the wall that celebrates the individuals who gave the ultimate sacrifice to protect his or her country. They will also ship their distilled spirits directly to you, so check them out at leatherwooddistillery.com. Hi, this is Steve Akeley, owner of the ABV Network. We're sponsored by the Stave and Thief Society. This is where you, a bourbon enthusiast, can expand your knowledge and emerge a bourbon steward. In 2017, I completed my executive bourbon steward certification. It's the most comprehensive bourbon certification program available and connects you with an expansive network of bourbon enthusiasts and professionals. Check out the full listing of in-person and online certifications and join the society today by enrolling at staveandthief.com. 
Okay, let's talk about Neely Family Distillery. In 2018, I met Royce Neely at an industry event. He started appearing on our shows, and we became friends during my frequent visits to Kentucky. Today, he's leading the way for young distillers making their mark on the bourbon industry. A visit to Neely Family Distillery combines family history, a look at what makes their products unique, and of course, a tasting through their whiskeys, moonshines, and creams. Check them out at NeelyFamilyDistillery.com and visit them in Sparta, Kentucky. This is Bob. I'm in Ohio. You're listening to the Bourbon Daily. Welcome back to the Bourbon Daily. Today, we're talking to Ryan Thompson about his bourbon journey. Yes, we are. So, Ryan, uh, we'd like to do this round robin. So, everybody's going to be asking you at least a question. Uh, I'm going to kick this thing off, and I want to go way back. Not, not like when you started you know, professionally getting into bourbon and stuff like that. I'm talking about what was your exposure to this growing up? Were you a household that drank bourbon? Uh, you know, your parents had it. Uh, did And when did you start to like bourbon yourself in terms of it being a drink, something that you enjoyed drinking? So kind of take us way back for this first question. If you want to go way back, it probably uh, goes back to my roots with the ultimate lemonade stand growing up as a kid. Uh -huh. I didn't just sell lemonade for 50 cents or a dollar a cup. I had I had bubble gum and candy and I would hoard fireworks throughout the year and sell those during non firework season, if you will, uh, collectibles like garbage pail kids and stuff along those lines. Yeah. So I had a, a fully decked out lemonade stand. Uh, for uh, there, a, a long was there time. bourbon there too? I mean, yeah, I was not. For that. Oh, I was gonna say, when does this start tying into bourbon? Uh, oh, okay, I, I thought, man, this was the ultimate lemonade. If, if he's serving up bourbon, he had the, the coolest parents ever. <laughs> doing bourbon I lemonades, I would be in. <laughs> but, uh, well, I guess that ties into our adult ice cream truck that we did during quarantine here in the Vale Valley, but that's another story. <laughs> but uh, where I was going with that is now I always look at our taste rooms kind of as the ultimate. Uh, lemonade stand. It's, that's all it is. It's just the adult lemonade right. stand is where we're going with it. So uh, my dad uh, enjoyed his cocktails. His go-to was a uh, seven and seven for a long time. Yeah. Uh, and then certainly when I hit my teenage years, uh, I don't know, I was kind of a late, later bloomer. Uh, got into, started drinking beers and whiskeys when I was 17 years old or so, somewhere there. Mm -hmm. uh, and then moved up to Vail when I was 22. And I uh, got a bartender job when I first moved to town and uh, uh, started bartending around town for four years. Uh, three of those years was at a, a fine dining restaurant called Sweet Basil. Uh, been in, it's uh, been around since 1978, still in Vail Village. I'm sure some of your viewers are familiar with it. Uh, but they had a great whiskey selection there. And that's where I started uh, tasting all kinds of different whiskey expressions and starting to understand the spirit on a much deeper level. Uh, and... Uh, I guess that's when I, I if I could go back and talk to that Ryan Thompson uh, yeah. at that age and I say, okay, work aside and all that. What, uh, what type of uh, spirits do you like to drink? Would you, would it be whiskey at that point? Or would you be like, I, I enjoy the cocktails that we make at the bar. No, it was definitely whiskey at that point. Okay. Uh, when okay, I was cool. working at sweet basil yeah, uh, and that's good. started familiarizing myself with a bunch of those uh, higher end whiskeys that maybe I didn't have the budget for necessarily, but I, I could uh, taste uh, for educational purposes there behind the bar then uh, I think that's really when it kicked in. Yeah, that's when when I I, I got the 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 whiskey and the bourbon bug. So okay, all right, Chrissy, what do you want to know from Mr. What, Ryan what Thompson? What you would to distill? I mean, just was it just the passion of 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 yeah, Mr. Chrissy? Ryan? So uh, after bartending uh, in town for four years, and I started a restaurant in Westville called the West Side Cafe, uh, and that's uh, we're about to celebrate our twentieth year anniversary there. Congratulations. Uh, and then, thank you. Appreciate that. And then I uh, started homebrewing uh, just for shits and grins a couple times a year uh, with some with friends and was uh, having fun doing that. And then kind of the next step was obviously distillation. And so I wanted to, to take it the next step and start playing around with distillations. Saw where the craft distilling movement was going, kind of uh, resembling what the craft brewing, brewery movement was doing 10 years previous. And thought someone in town was going to make whiskey sooner or later and said, might as well be me. And, and uh, went off to Moonshine University and came back, wrote a business plan and gathered as much money as I could together. And, and here we are eight years later. So that's awesome. Very nice. Thank you. Yeah. How about you, Jim? What do you want to know? So, Ryan, well, first of all, 
I want to uh, thank you for this uh, this drink I'm having tonight. This is spectacular stuff, and I love the high proof, and it's it's got a great uh, Colorado hug. Um, awesome, fantastic. exactly. Cheers, Jim. Thanks, man. No problem. Um, how long into distilling was it where you thought you'd kind of, and I don't know if you ever master your craft, but when you thought you had kind of just got your arms around the whole process and you were comfortable with what you're doing, like how long did that process take you where you knew you were making good product? Yeah. Ask me 20 years from now, I might have an answer for you. <laughs> I think it's something we're constantly learning. I think it's always something that we're trying to improve on in one aspect or another, constantly uh, learning. We're curious. I think that's very important. Uh, we not only make our everyday expressions, but we're lying down some experiments as well. I, I think a, a lot of distillers out there are. I think that's where a lot of the fun comes in. And so uh, I think the second that we we rest on our laurels is probably the, the second we stop growing. And so we're always continuing to, to learn and to, to grow and see what's next for when, us. When did you think there might be something there, though? Because there's different times. I mean, obviously, when you're making it yourself. Uh, you know, you, you guys are making it, I'm sure you're trying it. And, and, but I always think that's, that's kind of the worst way because it's always, you know, you've invested in this, right. that, that. you can't judge it by that. And do you judge it by when others come in, maybe, you know, maybe friends and family, is it outsiders? Like when you open up the doors and customers start trying it, is it when you win an award? When's that first time you're like, you know what? We're not too bad here at 10th Mountain. We're, we're, we're yeah, doing some good I stuff. Think- well, yeah, friends and family can give a little feedback, but it's always a little going to be a little bit Yeah, skewed. it's going to be so a, little, think, a little jaded, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think once it gets into uh, strangers' hands, neutral you start hands, hearing some yeah. feedback from them uh, is when uh, maybe you can have that yeah. thought of, wait, we're actually making something pretty damn good here, you know? And yeah. we don't, and it's not just us that likes it, and not, yeah. not just our friends and family that likes it. But it's uh, strange. It's, it's verifying. Met. It's verifying what you think and what you know. Because again, yeah. you're, I know you're tasting yourself, and you're and you're saying it's good. I'm sure. But yeah, right. it's, it's nice to have that affirmation from from people that uh, don't have. The and best all opinion. the online review sites makes that really easy for people to express themselves. Right. And yeah. we have across the board, we have a pretty pretty strong uh, reviews on, uh, online. So yeah. that's um, a positive and a negative because yes, on the positive yeah. side, anybody can review your stuff on the negative side. Anybody, anybody can review your stuff. Right. I mean, it's <laughs> exactly. a double-edged sword. It, it totally is because there's people out there that have agendas and they don't have anything invested. That's the, the only problem with, you know, yeah. relying on bloggers and stuff like that. There's no investment. And I can, I can start up a, a whiskey tasting blog for free. Uh, there, there's plenty right. of sites that'll uh, do it for free. So they have nothing. And versus you, I'm, I'm judging you who has everything that you've got and more because, you know, there's debt involved and all, you know, you've, you've got your whole life wrapped up in this thing and I get to judge you. And, and why? Because I've got a free program from, uh, you know, Wordsmith right. or whatever it is, you know, <laughs> from uh, Zuckerberg. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, and, it's, it's stupid to me. Yeah. And Ryan, yeah. I'll say, you know, I'm lucky enough over the last several years to taste hundreds of whiskeys a year. Um, and this year, Steve brought a sample back from your from your distillery that was a hazmat. That's probably the best thing I had all year. Yeah. That was, well, Jim, thanks, man. I appreciate that. That's awesome I, to hear. I, listen, I'm, not, I'm just being honest with that there. And I, I take I'm that's not taking anything away from everything else I've tasted. I've had great things over the years, but that was spectacular. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Appreciate it. That, that was that was a damn good barrel that uh, Steve and I got to enjoy while he was out here. And then I'm glad I yeah. got to bring some back to you as well. Yeah, he tried to steal the bottle from Steve, but he was uh, he was. <laughs> oh no, no, no! I was not uh, giving up that bottle. No way. <laughs> I acted like I was did. I acted like I messed up and put it in Jim's bag. I was like, okay, here's your. Because I, I had some of his stuff in the house. I put it in there and I put the put that uh, bottle in there just to see if he'd say anything. He Hell didn't no. say a word. <laughs> no. He's like, okay, man. I'm like, no, I did. I grabbed. I didn't even give it to him because I knew he tried to get on. So I pulled it back out of there. But yeah, I just wanted to see that. I you never know, said anything. I'd have gone home with me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Becca, what do you want to know about Ryan? Uh, so I've got a couple things that I was going to ask. Uh, first off, you were a, a bartender, you said. So I want to know uh, your favorite bourbon cocktail that is not neat, not a neat, not just with ice, something like that. I want to have a real cocktail. I also want to know what your, uh, your favorite proof is on bourbon and what your favorite mash bill is with bourbon. Great. So uh, favorite cocktail... I guess if we're going to stick with the bourbon cocktails, um, that's not neat. So add a rock to it. Yeah. Does that count? <laughs> uh, w- I say that and you're a cocktail guy and you're saying it is. I say that's a cocktail. Yes, we had, we and I discussed it the other day. We said it, it is technically a cocktail if you yeah. add an ice to it. So I'm just reading between the lines here what you said yeah. there. So that's uh, 
you know, you can get fancy, you can get trick, you can put nine ingredients in a cocktail and, and all the flair behind going and making it stuff. And there's a place and a time for, for one of those. Um, but certainly among this audience, I think a majority of people are probably going to say they enjoy their, their bourbon and their whiskeys, uh, neater on the rocks. And, yeah. and I'm, I'm right Absolutely. there with them. So, yeah. I think if Steve you if you had to say a, something back to back, claw, right, Steve? Oh, white claw. Yeah. Yours is white claw? <laughs> no, I've never even drank away. I have a fake picture out there of me with the white claw where uh, Royce and Becca took it when I was at their house. They set it up on a couch and I was sitting on a chair next to the couch. But by the angle, it looks like I had you know, it was sitting next <laughs> it was to me. Yeah. It was yeah. Uh, but uh, back to Becca's point, if we, if we had to look at the top 10 bourbon cocktails, which it's, you know, it's, it's the, all the ones we know, whiskey sours and uh, Bouvardier's and, and uh, old fashions and uh, Manhattan's and all that. Out, out of that group of what is considered the top 10 bourbon cocktails, back to Becca's point, what would be your favorite out of that list? If you had, you know what, I'm going a barrel age Boulevardier. Okay. 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 That's cool. Yeah, we make something like similar at our tasting rooms uh, and it's delicious and it sells great. Uh, that's a classy it. cocktail. I like that so, one. Yeah, yeah, I think it's you're classing uh, it up a little bit. Oh. Add a little another layer to it uh, by barrel aging it for about a month or so before you before you pour it. So a barrel aged uh, Boulevardier. Yeah, right. yeah. I think when you're when you're wanting to class up, you go with the Boulevardier. If you want to class down, you just want to be. Uh, I think the whiskey sour is the working sure. man's uh, uh, classic cocktail. I, love I do yeah. too, but uh, yeah, egg white or no egg white. Uh, egg white for sure. You got to have the egg white. You have to do egg white. <laughs> if you don't do the egg white, you're not doing it. Yeah. I almost made one for the podcast tonight, but I, uh, well, I'm just okay. drinking one on the rock. So, all right. All right. Okay. You had, <laughs> you, you, so her question had two more parts. Yeah. The proof, uh, what proof do I gravitate to? Uh, this is a, more of an easier question to answer because we do a blind barrel pick twice a year at our distillery. Uh, between myself and our distiller, and we usually have a special guest or two uh, join us. And our distiller, our head distiller, Sean Hogan, he and I usually gravitate towards something a little higher proof, while our guests gravitate towards something a little lower proof. And so it's always kind of a fun little uh, back and forth as to where we're going and what we're choosing. Uh, Sean and I n uh, know uh, each other's what each other like at this point, and so we know where we're going. And so we, I tend to gravitate towards something in the 110 to 115 proof. Yeah. Somewhere in there. Yeah. And then so. favorite mash bill. 75% corn, 21% rye, 4% malted barley. It's our bourbon, baby. Yep. There you go. <laughs> he did that. There you go. There Come you on. Go. <laughs> no, I think uh, aside from that, um, I'm, I'm across the board, Becca Sue. I'm, it's uh I don't really gravitate towards one in particular uh, that people ask, you know, what's your favorite uh, bourbon to be drinking? And aside from our own, and I, I go across the board. Uh, yeah, I don't don't, don't ever go, limit yourself. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There's I like to the taste. There. There's plenty out there that you can have one a day and still not uh, drink all of them here in the U S and, uh, and so I like to just change it up. If I go to a, a restaurant I look for something I haven't necessarily had, not only in a long time, but never had period. And so um, I like to uh, just switch things up. So, all right, we've gone around the horn. Does anyone want one last question for Ryan? The last question. Is there something out there? Any? Anybody? I've got one. Okay. This is the last question. for. Ryan. One more. Is that, I wrote down some. Uh, what was the very first bourbon that made you realize that you liked bourbon? Blantons. Blantons. There you go. There you go. Right when it came out, or I guess, well, Steve, yeah. correct me if I'm wrong, but this was 99 when I started working at Sweet Basil. Yeah. And they had just gotten blends or somewhere 2000, somewhere in that area. And that's the one I, I was gravitating to. Uh, you could find that out there for $40 or less uh, at that time, right. which was nice. Yeah. Was nice. I think so, it's really interesting yeah. how, you know, iconic and, and what a go-to it is for people these days and where it's, where it's, uh, where it's developed from over the last 20 years. Uh, yeah. But I think, uh, but that, yeah, that's an easy one. It was Blanton's I, when I was. I, I, I went through a phase where I was absolutely right there with you. Blanton's big time uh, because it was a little bit classier, a little bit different, a little bit upscale to what you could find out there. And uh, yeah, it was just good. And it was priced right now, especially when you, you go into liquor stores and they want $200 for a bottle. If they have it, it's like uh, it just it causes me that old man anger where I just get. Uh, angry and I don't even really understand right. why I'm getting so mad because it has nothing to do with me. I don't have exactly. to buy that bottle. Uh, they can just sit there, uh, but it just, it just what, makes what's, 
Woodford's was a relatively new one out at that time as well that caught my attention that I would revisit quite often. And so it's fun to see Woodford's uh, still doing what they're doing. Um, yeah. So that was a, that was a go-to back in the day as well. So both of those, I think probably uh, really piqued my interest in the bourbon categories. There you go. Yeah. All right. Well, that's about Ryan's bourbon journey. There he is. Check him out. 10th mountain distillery. And uh, he's doing some really great things. As Jim mentioned, that whiskey that he had, if we could have had a bottle of that and, and put that in some sort of contest, I, I feel like uh, it would, it would have won. I mean, it was amazing stuff. We're really, really good. Thanks. But, uh, yeah, we got to, we got to drink it. And uh, you know, when you drink a good one, you don't forget it. That's what's neat about bourbon. We'll be talking about that forever is uh, the, you know, that, that barrel. So it's, it's historic. All right. Uh, we'll talk about where people can find us. Chrissy, we'll start with you. Where can people find you? Svets one on Instagram, Christina Svets on Facebook, SamuelBurton.net. All right. Ryan. Website is 10th whiskey.com. That's one zero T H whiskey with an E.com across all socials at 10th MTN whiskey. And you'll even find us on TikTok these days. Oh, wow. Are you dancing and stuff? Oh, I'm not dancing. <laughs> oh, man. I wish we could see Ryan dancing on oh, <laughs> TikTok. I would join TikTok if, if there was a bunch of videos of Ryan dancing. As, uh, <laughs> that'll be, if anybody ever sees those, let me know and I'll, I'll jump on. All right, Jim, how about you? Where can people find you? You can find me on Facebook at Jim Fazot, on Instagram at Foz Jim, F A Z Z J I M, or my uh, new adventures on uh, Eventbrite doing Jim's big poor barrel tastings on Friday nights. Check yeah. It out. yeah. You're doing some exciting stuff. I mean, these are two ounce pours, which is uh, bigger than a pour you're going to even typically get at a bar. That's a big pour. And uh, you're doing some of the greatest stuff. I know you, we got your first one. And uh, as we record this, it's, uh, it's still, uh, you got some tickets left and uh, you shouldn't because you're doing a Blanton store pick, which those are tough to find. Uh, as we talked about Blanton's, you've got, uh, you know, gooey butter cake, which is uh, just one at the New Orleans bourbon festival, the best barrel pick of the festival. So yeah, yeah. You're doing some neat stuff with that. So yeah, check it out. It's a uh, ABV barrel shop. If you just want to search Eventbrite uh, for a producer and uh, follow that thing. So yeah, unless I saw you had about 15 followers right now jim so hopefully we'll, start uh, it up. we'll get there uh, just just getting going so hopefully uh get that that built up miss becca sue how about you where can people find you you can find me at neely family distillery doing barrel picks you can also find me on twitter and on instagram at miss becca sue 1k no c's all right, for me, I'm an easy guy to find. I'm at Steve Akeley on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. I've got a website, steveakeley.com. We've also got a company website. That thing's abvnetwork.com. Check it out because everything that we do is out there. Previous shows, blogs, so much more, abvnetwork.com. Miss Becca Sue, anything else to say before we get out of here? I just like to remind the audience to please give us a five-star review that includes comments. It helps when people find the show, which is very important to us. If you like what we're doing, we ask you please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com backslash the ABV Network. Great job today, gang. For audience, we'll have a brand new show for you tomorrow. Looking forward to that. Until then, take care, everybody. See you. Bye. Cheers. Bye. Peace. Before we finish the show, let's talk about some great companies that support the ABV network. First up is Moonshine Still Pro. Moonshine Still Pro has a full line of products to help the home distiller. Whether you want to experiment on the stove in your kitchen or you're looking for a bigger setup in your backyard, owner Russell Creed and his team can help. They have multiple still offerings, accessories, and even grain from their partners at Goldstone Mill to assist you in making whiskey on par with your favorite distillery. They can also help you with some fabricated parts you probably can't make yourself if you are attempting a DIY still project. Learn more or order your still or parts at moonshinestillpro.com. Another friend of ours is the Goldstein family at Goldstone Mill. The Goldsteins offer a variety of heritage and heirloom grains to make the finest whiskeys in the world. Plus, they are more than just a grain company. They are truly consultants to make sure the grains they are providing to you or your business meet your highest expectations. Additionally, they work with mills around the country ensuring shipping is as low as possible for their customers. If you are a distillery, brewery, or even doing this at home, Goldstone can assist you. Check them out at goldstonemill.com, call them at 217-254-6613, or check in via email at hello at goldstonemill.com. The Bourbon Daily is part of the ABV Network. For more information or to become a sponsor, please visit abvnetwork.com. Thanks for listening and cheers.
This has been a Steve Akeley production. Thank <laughs> you.